Hey, feeling good, like I should. When in Durku, walk around the neighborhood, feeling blessed. All right, let's take a look at our study guide for chapter three, test two. This first page is loaded with distributive property types of problems. So if we're talking about numerical expressions, we can simplify them. As such, you could technically just add these two numbers together and then multiply times six, but then what's the fun in that when you can do distributive properties? So this becomes 54 plus 24, which gives us an answer of 78. Same with all of these numerical expressions, okay? Now, this, these problems in here, problem number five and problem number six, are meant to show you that distributive property when you're simplifying numerical expressions actually can be very, very helpful. So instead of trying to keep track of everything with six times 46, if you just know that you're gonna multiply six times 40, which is 240, and six times six, which is 36, 240 plus 36 is a little bit easier mentally than six times 46 and just keeping track of carrying everything over. Same thing here. If I want to multiply three times 27, I'm going to take three times 20, which is 60, and three times seven, which is 21, and 21 plus 60 is 81. That's a lot easier to solve that problem. So we'll apply that here. What is eight times 43? Well, it's going to be 320, eight times 40, plus 24, so that's got to be 344. And here, 6 times 78 would be 6 times 7, which is 420. And 6 times 8, is, what did I do there? One of my on-purpose mistakes, probably. That's not right. It's got to be 420, right? Because 6 times 7 is 42. Plus, 6 times 8 is 48. So I believe our answer is supposed to be 468. That is the correct number, not that one right there. Uh, it's much more fun to do this in class when someone doesn't raise their hand because they didn't do it, as opposed to you online where you don't get a chance to get caught in that. Oh, well, whatever. Okay. So when we are doing numerical expressions, there are a few different ways to get around distributive property, or you can use it to your advantage, like we saw with 5, 6, 7, and 8. When we're talking about uh, algebraic expressions, you're really just rewriting the expression. You know, there are some times when you actually do want to have this written as three times the sum of x and six, but other times you would want to rewrite it as three x plus 18, all right? So it's just a matter of sending in the dive bombers. And honestly, you can send in the dive bombers in any direction. It doesn't really make any difference which direction you go, okay? So if you uh, need any help on any of these, uh, I'd be happy to work this out for you. Otherwise, just pause it and check your answers to make sure you're getting everything correct. Problem number 27 is using kind of a 5D process here, drawing the pictures, defining your different variables um, to solve the word problem, which you're going to have to do a few of these on the test. So you've got a board that's been cut into five pieces. Three of them are shorter, two of them are longer. Longer pieces are three more inches, no, centimeters, than the shorter ones. So two of them are x plus three, while three of them will just be x's. Well, if the total sum of all of those boards is 150, because all of these were cut from a board that was 150 centimeters long, then we can say that five x's, right? One, two, three, four, five, plus six is equal to 150. And now we work through the process. And once we solve for x, we'll know that each one of these is 28.8 centimeters. And each one of these has to be three more, so they would be 31.8 centimeters. Now, can you imagine doing a guess and check process for this and, and finally settling on 28.8 and 31.8? That would be a nightmare. But since we're solving it algebraically, it's the same number of steps as you would ever have. First, you subtract six from each side, then you divide by five, and whatever you get, that's your answer. And of course, you're using a calculator, so that makes life a little bit easier. Now, we want to make sure that this is correct, that the sum of all of these adds up to 150. So I'm going to use my calculator for that. 28.8 times 3 is 86.4. So all three of those combined make 86.4 centimeters. Then I'll just add a couple of 31.8s to that. 
And sure enough, we get 150. So I've checked it and I can now declare my answer. The shorter ones are 28.8 centimeters. The longer ones are 31.8 centimeters. And we do the same thing for Marta's jump rope, Marta and Dilbert. Now this is where it gets a little tricky. Uh, instead of it being like two times or three times, it's one and a half times. So if Dilbert's is X, then Marta's is 25 inches shorter than, subtract that from, one and a half times X. So the combined total is 221. So you add this to this, combine like terms, Add 25 to each side, then divide at the end by 2.5, and you will get the answer for X, which is Dilbert's rope. And what is uh, Marta? We have to multiply this times 1.5, then take away 25. So let's see if that works on the calculator. 98.4, which is Dilbert's rope, when we multiply that times 1.5, we get no. 98.4 times 1.5 equals 147.6. Now, when we subtract 25 from that, because it's 25 inches shorter than 147.6, you get 122.6. And now, how do we know that this is correct? Add 122.6 to the 98.4, and you should get 221. Stop it. Point four, and you get 221. So we can declare that as our answer. Problem number 29, what did she do wrong? So the mistake that she's making is she should have added four to each side. She should not have subtracted four from each side. Now, if you check your answer, you would know that that is wrong, and you'd be able to go back and look at your work. Here, we feel pretty confident about that. If x is equal to 1, this becomes negative 2 plus 6, which is 4 and 8 plus a negative 4, which is also 4. So the mistake was she didn't create a zero pair there by adding 4 to each side. She took away 4 from each side, which makes this actually 8x minus 8, and that just messes up everything. Then for problem 30, this we haven't spent a lot of time on this, but it's you know, good for us to, to uh, work through it. Uh, if we're saying that 3 times x minus 3 divided by 5 is equal to 6, then I want to figure out what was this before we divided it by 5. So we could multiply 5 on each side, and that means that this quantity must have been 30, since 30 divided by 5 is 6. So that means that 3x, or 3 times x minus 3 has to be equal to 30. So I'm going to use distributive property here and call this 3x minus 9 is equal to 30. So what was the 3x before we took away the 9? It must have been 39. And so if 3 times x is 39, then x has to be equal to 13. So that's the solution for x. Remember, you're just working through this backwards. There is a sequence of steps to do, but if you just think about it logically, this quantity up here has to be equal to 30 since 30 divided by 5 is 6. And if that's the case, then really you could also say that x minus 3 must be equal to 10 since 3 times 10 is equal to 30. So if this is equal to 10, then what number minus 3 is equal to 10? 13. 13 minus 3 is 10. 3 times 10 is 30. 30 divided by 5 is 6. That proves that x is equal to 3. And that ends our study guide. So let's get over to the test. Take care. Bye. Hey, feeling good, like I should When in Durkle, walk around the neighborhood Feeling blessed